Hey there, hi there, ho there, THP 494 and 598. All right, you've stuck with me through this kind of miserable and a little bit uh, long-winded talk about how we kind of get this set up in an initial kind of way. So now let's look at that uh, a little bit differently. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this. And, well, once this is closed, I am going to start up two brand new, spanking new instances of Touch Designer. So I'm actually going to open up two separate applications and we're going to use a similar kind of format that we used before, right? So I'm going to leave one of these here on the right and I'm going to stick one over on the left and we're going to look at how we can actually send that information between two concurrently running applications because that is really where the exciting stuff is going to happen. All right, let's see if we can um, Show my window side by side. Yes, excellent. Thank you, Windows. Okay, so first things first, this is a little bit hard to kind of figure out what's going on. Uh, so to help us uh, kind of mentally kind of stay put and figure out what's going on here, uh, first I'm gonna delete those two project files. We're gonna do the usual thing here where we add a base to both of our projects. Over on the left, we'll call this send. We're going to uh, maintain the same kind of format. And on the right, we'll use receive. And now we're going to use one of my favorite tricks um, that I very rarely get to show off. And I just love to death because it is so fun. Uh, and it proves just how customizable Touch Designer really is when we start to think about it. And that's uh, exploiting UI colors a little bit. So I always think color coding is an excellent way to help me kind of visually parse out uh, what's what and what's different between places. And there is actually a great way that we can do that. So let's add a text dat here to our network. And we're going to use uh, the following little script. We're going to say ui.colors and then square brackets and in quotation marks worksheet.bg. That's our background. You better believe it. And now we just have to give this three values. So I happen to have picked out a color already for this one, which is 0, 0.0 and 0 0.157 and 0 0.27. Great googly moogly. I'm going to go ahead and run this script. And now, oops, that's not totally what I wanted. That is what I wanted. Let's run that. All right, so now I've got one network that's got a green background over here. And uh, let's add a different color over here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my constant and track down a color that I might want to use. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go something crazy like a pinky kind of color. Why not? It's going to burn our eyes a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, and let's use these colors here, right? 0 0.346, straight up 0, 0, and 0, 1, 9, 1. Excellent. Now let's make sure we don't have any redundant periods here. And we'll run that. Okay. That might be like a little bit too bright, but for today, that should... Uh, help us at least differentiate between our send on the left and our receive on the right. Right, They're pretty pretty swanky. I like this uh, trick an awful lot. It's really helpful when you have multiple um, applications up and running and you need an easy way to differentiate between what's happening in two different spaces. Okay, so now let's dive into send and let's dive into receive. And let's take a look at some of the same things we've already practiced. It's going to feel a little bit redundant, so we can go a little bit faster. Uh, but the really important thing here is going to be to remember that we're now actually running two separate TOW files. So these are two separate applications running on our machine at the same time. Uh, and this is a way that we might start to think about how we build things that have a server-slave kind of model. If we can start to understand how we do this on a local machine, it's a hop, skip, and a jump for us to start to think about how we do that on a larger distributed network. And that's really what we're all about here. Okay, so let's start uh, with our tops. So let's go ahead and go back to our trusty circle.
So we're going to drop our circle down here in our network. Let's make it a polygon. Uh, let's give it a little bit of rotation. Abs time dot frame. Make that puppy dance. And let's go ahead and attach this to a touch out. So we've got a touch out here. Let's go ahead and use the network 9010. That's our network port. And over here on the right, we will touch in. And here we are sure enough going to use 9010. And there we go. So now we're passing this between uh, concurrently running applications. And if we can do it uh, with tops, you better believe that we can do it with chops. So we're again going to go back to our good old friend noise. We'll go ahead and uh, give our channel some uh, a number of different inputs here. So let's, we've got five channels. Excellent. I'm going to time slice that. Touch out. Touch in chop. Excellent. 8,000, 8,000. All right. If we can do it with this, can we do it with the dat? So first we need to, uh, let's start with a table. And let's actually uh, edit the contents of this first. So we might have hue, saturation, R, G, B, and A. Touch out. 9500 is our network address. Touch in. And again, we can go ahead and start to add some values here. And we can see those uh, pass right between these processes. Excellent. All right. So if we can do it here with our series of touch ins and outs, well, then certainly we can also do this with OSC. So we're going to use an OSC out. We're going to go ahead and borrow the same noise that we've already set up. Uh, no use in wasting that. Let's give this a different network address, 1212, OSC in. Sure shooting text, there it is. All right, and last but not least, let's look at how we can send messages back and forth. So again, right, we could uh, dive in here and we're gonna need a text dat to format that. We're gonna need an OSC out. Then we'll over here on the right, we're going to need an OSC in to catch that message. And let's start to put it together. So again, our message is going to be a list. And here, we might just go ahead and put in a string. And we're going to use the operator that's OSC out to, and we're gonna use dot send OSC dot slash is how we're gonna get this started with our header, and we're gonna send message. Excellent, we should be able to run that script, and lo and behold, there it is. All right, so that's pretty swanky. That's getting us pretty close here. This is certainly helping us start to think about how we can send this information back and forth and all around uh, and what this is actually going to mean for us. Okay, so in a nutshell, what we just did here, and this is a fast one, so that's great, is we've set up a series of operators uh, that allow us to kind of proof of concept see that we can have two simultaneously running applications that then communicate with one or, with one another using either touch ins and outs or OSC, open sound control, as a communication method. So I'm going to add one other caveat here. There's one other method that we might use, uh, and this is useful for commercial or pro licenses. So not useful for necessarily everybody, but certainly something that uh, does exist. And that is going to be shared memory. So let's go ahead and add something like a movie file in. 
And our movie file in, let's actually find something that moves a little bit here. So let's grab our count movie. Excellent. All right, so this count movie is uh, something that we, uh, we might want to send over the network. And if we're dealing only in the circumstance, right? So only in the circumstance that we're dealing with uh, a local machine where we want to move from one application to another application, we can use something called shared memory. So shared memory allows us to actually grab the memory um, off of our video card in this case and then send this over to another process and shared memory in. And this is incredibly fast, right? This is uh, super duper fast here. Um, and we have almost no lag in comparison to if we're sending this over the network where we might have to think about lag in a different kind of way. Right, so if we were to pause over here, we could see 97, 97, we're lockstep on the same frame. Now, uh, by contrast, let's go ahead and plug this in up here. And let's see, we might not be too terribly bad because of the size of this. We're still two frames behind, right? Um, and this isn't the end of the world for something that's this small. Um, but if we're starting to deal with really high resolution video, right? So this is 640 by 360. If we're starting to think about things that are much larger, uh, high definition or even 4K in size, right? Now we're start. Now it becomes really important for us to have a really strong sense of how we're going to send video from one process to another process, right? We might think about setting up a whole network whose only job is to do the edge blending uh, and video mapping inside of our network, and we have another application that's actually doing all of the queuing and um, kind of compositing and layering. So we've kind of broken up that process a little bit where we have one specialty application whose sole purpose is just to do the video distribution, right, in terms of how we're mapping that on surfaces. And we have another application that we're using that's actually doing all of our queuing uh, and compositing. And then we're uh, using shared memory as a way to pass the video stream from one to another. Uh, shared memory also has uh, cousins in uh, uh, chops, right? Uh, and it also has uh, one last cousin that's over here in um, components. So not everything has got shared, right? So this is like one of those things where uh, not everything is like one another. And that's okay. That's really going to be quite all right for us in the long run. And one of the things that we just have to experiment with to really kind of get a handle on and understand in a deep way, right? We've got to keep practicing that until it becomes intuitive. And that's one of the things that comes with time. All right, so all of that's said and done. We've got a kind of uh, example here of how this works when we're thinking about um, communicating between processes on a local machine. So the same process would work then if we were dealing with uh, video that was, or control that was distributed over multiple machines. So now let's look at a very specific use case scenario of how something like Touch OSC, uh, which is an application available by Hexler, uh, and is available on touchscreen devices like your Android devices or your iOS devices. Let's look at how that very special case of an application is something that we might want to exploit or see how it works in this very way um, when it starts, when it comes to thinking about how we communicate between processes and take advantage of that kind of opportunity. All right, I'm going to see you on the flip side.